it's Rock here from the Whiskey Library. So today um, we're going to be doing an American bourbon and uh, you know obviously this video is coming to you from Australia and probably people around the world don't realize that uh, Australians are big bourbon drinkers and in fact um, often we're the second biggest bourbon market in the world uh, obviously behind the USA. I know that you know Germany drinks a lot of bourbon because of the you know the history of US bases and so forth but I think you know Australia's had American culture infused um, into society here a lot and that's extended to the bourbon but listen if um, any Australian viewers are watching this <laughs> and you do want a, a review on Australian whiskies I'm waiting for the feedback down below I did get a nice um, uh, Australian whiskey from the Barossa came in uh, yesterday a couple of days before that uh, from Hobart Hobart whiskey so there are whiskies here at the whiskey library but we need to know that we've got viewers and people that are interested in it um, that being the case um, no doubt you've noticed by the type of the decanter bottles here today's review is on Blanton's bourbon and because uh, we do all sorts of whiskey here and it, in fact we are doing the gold edition so Blanton's gold so stay tuned for this review To be honest, um, Blanton's has been, Blanton's bourbon has been crammed into nearly every liquor store in Australia for years, and you couldn't give this stuff away. It was a good bourbon for those who were in the know, it was great, but there were some supermarket uh, supermarkets out there that, that sold the bourbon. Um, and you know, it probably wasn't as well known um, to your average bourbon drinker here in Australia that would drink you know, Jack Daniels, not a bourbon I know. Uh, wild turkey and the like. So uh, we, we would end up with um, uh, a, quite a selection of different uh, bourbons from Blanton's. Um, we would have the, the special reserve in this green label, uh, which was sort of the bottom shelf or entry level. Um, and then you went up to the original private uh, barrel reserve, which is this um, sort of brown label. And then you would go up to the gold label. <coughs> and then the top of the range would be uh, this incredible straight from the barrel bourbon, um, which was, which is bottle of 63, well, this particular example, 63.8. So knock your socks off with that stuff. And uh, again, you, you, this would sit on the top shelf. It was cheap as chips, 150 Australian dollars. Couldn't give it away. Uh, and then, if, of course, if you're in Japan, or oh, maybe this was a J Japanese only version, was the black label uh, Blanton's. And to be honest with you, this has just come out of the whiskey library. I just went over the back, people who may have noticed, or we take you paying attention, may have noticed in the background there, there was these Blanton's lined up on the wall, and there's more I see over there. Um, uh, so there's, you know, different, different sorts of. Uh, Blanton's this Japanese one. It was 2020, 20, barrel number 23, Rick number 50. Oh, it's only 40% brew. So that one doesn't seem to be anything special. I then it's got this black sort of label on it, which I haven't seen before. Um, now, as far as the gold, you know, here in Australia, it comes in by the box uh, export. <laughs> uh, it's full here. We've got so much of it, we don't know what to do with it. It comes in boxes we buy it by the box um it's cheap as chips 120 australian dollars or less and um yeah most liquor stores would uh probably uh, give you a substantial discount just to get it off the shelves which is a shame because um when i was um just having some tastings here over the back corner end there of the whiskey library we had the tasting bar what we call the tasting bar and this beauty has been on then oh my god you know i just keep coming back to it and thinking um of, of of all the bourbons this is an incredible pride i just had to do a review on it um and we'll give it a taste test in a minute um i have we'll scour on the internet for some information about um blanton's you know of course uh, it, it it was the the first i suppose single barrel bourbon and that's what's made it made it famous but i found this great um 
fairly scraped piece uh, off the internet. So I thought, rather than try and just ramble and make up my own facts, I'd just read this out. Um, Blanton's the first single barrel bourbon. Um, and, I, and I guess what they say here is, it's, it, you know, define the super premium category for bourbon. And then a whole stack of bourbons um, came, came straight up to that. Um, the product's aged in one barrel and obviously never blended with any other um, bourbon. And so the concept there is, you know, once you get out of the barrel and into the bottle, theoretically you look at the, um, the bottle here, this one's a bit hard to see because of the gold writing, but it'll tell you the barrel number, the rick number, the proof, uh, stored in warehouse H, in, in which case apparently all the gold ones come from warehouse H. I'm not sure if that's true, but I have heard that said before. Um, so where they're stored in the warehouse obviously has an impact on the flavour of that. And, I, and you know, I, I found that personally having been to, to Jack Daniels and tasted some of you know, the barrels are up near the top of the warehouse um, and or close to the windows where it's hotter, you know, depending on the temperature variations, all that sort of thing, um, which affects the way that the whiskey matures. Um, um, they're saying here that, um, you know, the, the, the heart of the, the whiskey warehouse or rick house is where you find the best bourbons or best single barrel bourbons. I'm not sure about that at all. I think the higher up you go, I think the more variation in temperature or breeze, even by the window, that, that can be the best. Um, so obviously the quality is, um, you know, potentially the best, particularly if the master distiller picks out a good, uh, you know, if he finds a good barrel and you're lucky enough to get the whatever it is, 200, 250, 300 bottles that come out of that barrel, then you're on a winner. By the same token, you could easily lose out there if it's not a particularly good barrel. But you wouldn't think that the master distiller or the taster or any of the distillers there are going to pull out a barrel um, that's not up to spec. They would just blend that away with other bourbons. Um, I mean, this one, obviously straight from the barrel, is literally straight out of the barrel and either has no water or just a tiny amount of water. The gold edition here is 103 proof. So in Australian terms, um, that would be about 50, 50 and a bit, 51 and a bit. So 103 divided by two. Um, so uh, alcohol by volume. So that's not obviously containing water, it's not straight out of the barrel. So there's been, that particular single barrel has been cut down by um, some water. Now, this Blanton's was released in 1984. So that's the first time we'd ever heard of a single barrel bourbon and probably put out there as a bit of an experiment to, to the market. Uh, at that time, of course, they were all um, either Tennessee whiskies or blended bourbons. Uh, bourbon, you know, particularly in the 60s, 70s, had a bit of a bad reputation. Um, there was heaps of products on the market. Uh, so, you know, sales were very low. A lot of it went to a place like Japan, which is starting to boom back then. Um, we probably got some here in Australia back in the day. Although, you know, I certainly, I'm a Queenslander, grew up in Queensland, I never saw any Blantons until uh, maybe the late 90s or mid 90s before it uh, made its way up to Queensland. Um, it was named after Colonel Albert Bacon Blanton. I hope this is true. <laughs> I found it on the internet, so I'm assuming it's true. Uh, but his name is Albert Bacon Blanton. That's good enough for me. For anything that has the two words, bacon and bourbon must be good, right? Uh, who in 1901, at the age of 20, became the superintendent of the um, uh, distillery. It was a labour of love for Blanton, who led the enterprise as only working distillery in Kentucky during Prohibition from 1920 to 33. So uh, he'd been through a, a great flood in 1937, according to this. Uh, Master distiller Elmer T. Lee, who we know from the famous bourbon. It's actually a bottle over there I see of Elmer T. Lee that, um, again, uh, in Australia, he was unloved for so many years. and. By the time you sip the, down the bottle of bourbon, you go to bite again and it's gone. Disappeared off the market. Um, his master distillers hall, hall of fa uh, for fame memory oversaw the introduction of single barrel bourbons. Um, all bland and bourbons are superbly packaged in this jewel-like container. And I'll be honest, it is a beautiful container. 
um, particularly this gold one with the gold stopper and the gold decanter. It's just a gem. Probably why it wasn't loved by liquor retailers and bottle bottle shops maybe here in Australia. Imagine if you had to whack a few of those on your bottle shop. Um, they're not slim tall bottles like Jim Bean. They take up a bit of space. They come with an annoying box that you have to throw away. <laughs> right, the stopper probably chips easy. It's got wax around it. Real pain in the neck for the bottle shop retailer. Um, but beautiful looking bottle. Now, there is this little jockey on here, which we'll just do a close up shot of that. Now, it's just here in the corner, or just at the start, uh, here's a little letter. Um, now, the bottle, this particular bottle I'm holding here is a letter B. B for Blanton's. And uh, you can collect all these different stoppers, believe it or not. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can collect them all to spell the word either Blanton or Blanton's. Blanton's, I'm guessing. Um, and it's, you know, uh, here in the Whiskey Library, we love the horses. We love horse racing. We love bottles rela uh, related to horse racing. And Soon we'll go through our, um, our Kentucky Derby bottles up there from Woodford Reserve. There's some crackers up there and also Knob Creek, I noticed. Um, so, so obviously this one's B, so it's the first horse in the race. And he's just uh, strolling up to the gates, ready, getting ready to jump. And I imagine as you go along, you'll see some of the ones here uh, cantering along mid part of the race. In fact, these might all be the same letter. They look very similar. <laughs> Um, so yes, go and collect these if you can uh, do that. Um, yeah, so different strides and you can collect the set. All right, enough going on about the bottle and the history. Um, you, we have to crack into this because this thing is a thing of an absolute beauty. On the nose there, so it's got that beautiful, sweet bourbon. Uh, smell always reminds me of Kentucky. Uh, I am going to pour this out and it is a little bit of a pain in the neck. I'm not going to lie with the uh, the neck. It's a little bit of an, uh, a pain to pour. The trick I've found is to pour it sort of up high and slowly. That's the trick. Um, oh my God, smelling that decanter. Ooh. Oh, sorry, that cork there. It's beautiful. All right, here we go. So... Uh, let's have a look now. Is it gold? I think it's not really gold. It's darker than gold. Copper, burnished copper, antique copper, bronze. Uh, maybe dark gold if you want. I don't know why that particular one is in a gold bottle. Must be some history to it. I do actually see now that I've poured this out. But I don't know if that shows up on the camera, but the long legs. Um, as I've poured that rolling down the inside, that bottle's absolutely beautiful. Amazing stuff. So, yeah, beautiful colour. Um, on the nose, like so many Kentucky bourbons, I get the banana. <laughs> Reminds me of a, um, a banana. What are they called? What's the, the ban ba 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 banana boat? The banana boat uh, with the cream. Banana smoothie. Banana sundae. There we go. Banana sundae. Oh, I should. I see I could barely uh, get that um, into my. My notes here say that it's got a copper hue. Okay. So copper is probably probably true. I think, you know, from what I remember, the gold does have a, a different color. You think it have a gold color to, to the other blends from memory, especially special, special edition there. Um, caramel, yeah, dried fruits. Uh, a little bit of fig. Don't get in there. A little bit of sweet fig. Uh, of course, so many of these uh, high quality bourbons from Kentucky you get that toffee note. Um, you know, imagine that. Imagine if you could have toffee sundae, toffee uh, banana sundae. Oh my God. Maple syrup dripped over there. Some Blanton's gold. You'd be in sweet heaven. I get there's I, I, now I'm talking about the finish. Um, I'm talking about the palette, the finish here. It's a little bit of um, I want to say there's a little bit of a peppery kick there right at the end. Um, 
I wouldn't say black brown, uh, black ground uh, pepper. I would say more a, a sort of a white pepper. And and I guess I, I'm feeling that little bit of a dryness um, on the back of the throat. So I would say dry finish. Now, um, that may be one of the reasons why people really love this gold Blanton's, you know, and Blanton's in particular compared to so many other bourbons. Is it is a little bit different. It's a little bit high proof for a start. Uh, it comes with a beautiful decanter. Um, you know, it, it, it's got those toffee notes. The banana aspect of it isn't overbearing. And um, it's got a bit of a dry finish to it. So it doesn't have that traditional sweet finish. Um, which sometimes can be, uh, you know, overbearing and also sometimes means it's hard to distinguish uh, distinguish between the bourbons, no matter the price you pay. So I would say this is a cracking, um, uh, a cracking bourbon. And I, look, honestly, if if uh, we weren't restricted on grabbing some bottles out there from the whisk from the whiskey library, that bottle would be going down and. Uh, you know, we do have a lot of bourbons over there, so uh, maybe it's maybe they should be more empty than what it is. <laughs> Let me just tuck that one in under here. Yeah, it's a beauty. It's a crack. I'm going to give this a super high rating because I love it, and I think it's an amazing bourbon. And I think if you can get your hands on it, get your hands on it. Uh, I'm going to give this 93 out of 100. I can't, I can't pick, I can't recall many better bourbons to be honest, and certainly not for that price. This is Rock coming to you from the Whiskey Library. Thank you for staying tuned. Enjoy.